You are not seeing the results of my successful painting, but in fact you are seeing the results of my successful covering up of all the mistakes that I made. Hi, this is Ground Affected. My name is in fact your dad, and in this video I'm going to show you how I painted this Wonder Woman statue from Zez Studios, which is a Patreon which you must totally and uh, most definitely check out in the description down below. As you can tell, just by the prints, the quality of this patron's statues is of the toppest of tippiest of tears. Now in order for us to start making mistakes, I mean painting the model, we need to have some kind of way of holding these parts. And the reason that I've come to the conclusion of sticking things in holes and grabbing them with these little alligator clips is because in previous models, I've made the mistakes of trying to hold these things by hand. And it doesn't work that way, so learn from my mistakes and shove some sticks in the holes of your models. This will allow you to easily prime these things and paint them if you're airbrushing them or whatever the case is. As you can tell, I don't hang things precariously at all and I do not leave my models up to the hands of the model gods when I dry them. To start out painting this model, what I need to do is actually start spraying some things, some undercoats first. Usually black would be a good undercoat, but in the cases of some of the parts on this base, I need an undercoat of silver, and some other parts, their main colour is silver. I'm going to get that all out the way right now. And then, using a Zenithal highlight, Zenithal. I'm going to start spraying that from the top of the model where the light essentially will be coming. This is, for me, where the sun is hitting the skin is going to be straight ahead of the model. This is just going to be the easiest way, in most cases, for you to just light your model. If you do it this way, you usually it can't go wrong. If you're trying to be a little bit fancy, you can use other methods as well. At this point, I'm also going to do some base coats with the gold pieces. I'm just going to say on the back of that, the gold that I used, or brass, does not like to be sprayed as well through the airbrush. I don't know if that helps you, but let's just stop being distracted and move on to how I painted the base. For this base, it's quite a dry base. Uh, it, does that make any sense? It probably doesn't make sense. It's dry, which means that it needs to look dry. So I'm going to use a dry brush for a lot of the techniques on this base. I'm just using grey and this weird dust colour from Ammo by Mig, and I'm going to use them one after the other. Once I have got roughly some nice highlighted shapes on the base, I'm going to come back with some Caribou Crimson and spray that in the area where the helmet's going. That is because apparently something has died and there is a helmet of death and uh, some spears of death and uh, <laughs> I used Drakonoff Nightshade, which is a wash from Citadel, and I sprayed that into some of the crevasses Jesus. upon this base. This gave it some more colour, so it wasn't just completely desaturated. That is the word I was thinking about. Now you can see me overbrushing, because it's not really a dry brush, some brass over the top of that silver. The reason why I left the silver at first was so we could do this overbrush, meaning that it left over some silver in the gaps, making it look more like the edges has been damaged, and just making the weathering on this part a lot easier. I also sprayed some Reichland Flesh Shade as you can see and I used this blood effect stuff from Citadel and I flicked that and sprayed that at the helmet as well as onto the spears at that time. Also on the base there is the only other piece of colour that's gonna stand off this base is this little blanket. I think it's for picnicking I'm not really sure, but don't count me on that. All I'm saying is that basically there's a blanket and it needed to be painted red. I used a contrast paint red for this because I didn't want it to be too bright and I wanted it to kind of remain a little bit dullish on the base. And so far you're probably saying to yourself, well, this guy ground affected keeps telling me, oh, but you're making mistakes and uh, it's how you cover them and get bare, bare, bare. But basically, let me tell you, right? You don't always make mistakes all the time. And when you make a mistake, it's going to be at the worst time possible. I want you to see exactly how much work goes into getting the skin tones that I'm painting on this model right now. Because at some point, I'm going to damage that. And I need to come back and I'm going to show you how to recover that. So if you keep watching the video, you're going to get some good information about how to fix it. In the background, you can see me painting the skin tones. I've done many, many videos on painting skin tones and you can see them in my channel if you go and have a look at the, in my channel. Also, this is a good time for me to tell you that this model 
being painted in so many parts like this is only rarely possible due to Zez Studios, the sponsor of this video, and the way that they cut their models. Their models are cut in such a way that they fit so well together, you can print everything in separate parts as long as it's supported relatively well, and it would all just fit together like a puzzle piece. Honestly, their quality of their parts is just out of this world. Just check out in the description if you're interested in this model or the future models that they are going to be making. She's a wonderful woman. Yeah. She's a wonderful woman. And now after leaving things right here in this extremely safe environment, I am going to quickly run to the shop and uh, buy this spray paint. This is a very cheap clear lacquer uh, that I buy because it dries relatively quick and uh, this is going to be one of the downfalls as we will find out later on uh, to the reasons why I've made a mistake and how I needed to fix it. For now though, don't worry about the mistake, I want to show you something uh, with the skin tones before you start painting them that you may have come across and maybe you're worried. Do you see the amount of variation in the skin here? There is loads of pieces, bits and bobs, it's like the paint was a bit patchy. Don't worry about that, this is your undercoat and this will look actually better when you paint over the top of this later on because skin is not perfect, it has some variation in it so it will help your skin to be a bit more believable. At this point I also want to explain to you one more thing painting these parts in separate bits like this thanks to Zez Studios is one of the things that I really actually enjoy about making their models and if you enjoy this model or you think you would want to paint something like this please don't forget to check them out in the description down below at Zez Studios once a month you will be given the three highly detailed sculpts as well as three detailed bust stands to go with those sculpts that's where you put your spare heads if you get a spare head now let me try and be just a little bit honest and try to give you some insight into what it's like making a video for someone to watch on the internet. None of this was done obviously in the 18 or 15 minutes that the length of this video would be and throughout this process there has been multiple mistakes that I've made. For example maybe I left a bit of dust, maybe there was a bit of hair and I had to pull it off, maybe I had to just quickly, I don't know, spray another color over another color because I used the wrong color. Think Things like this happen throughout the process and it's not possible for a content creator to show you every single step along the way. This entire model was built over many hours of work but I am going to show you one of the biggest mistakes that happened to me and how I recovered from it but before we get there I need you to know that there was a lot of work that went into getting to this point. Without ruining anything I have given the skin a transparent clear lacquer coating to make sure that it is protected from any of the spillages or mistakes that I may make in the next couple of steps. I painted her skirt with the lovely blue and I painted her under uh, skirt with the black because that is what it looks like in the picture. I used this nondescript silver because I have no idea what the name is because it rubbed off of Ammo by Mig's a paint pot. It is some shiny element, I don't know, it's silver from Ammo by Mig and I painted that over all the metallic bits which is basically the rest of her suit because this is going to set me up for the colours that I add on later. I then took some Drakonoff nightshade and started to shade the skirt. As you can see, there is a large... Uh, stop! Stop the video! Stop! Zoom in this right there! This is the result of one a huge mistake. I never allowed enough time for the clear coat that I was using as a protection layer to cure or even dry properly. This means that every time I sand or rub this part, it will curl the edges of the paint over and create a bigger and bigger and bigger problem which we need to solve very fast. Now the first reaction that most people would have is to sand this and you can totally do that but give it some time to dry and be very gentle. I'm using a sponge sander here which is 1200 or even I think maybe 1800 grit. It's super fine and you want to be very careful around the edges to try and smoothen them off as much as you possibly can. Don't peel up any more of the edges. The next thing is to take a paint something like Vallejo which is quite a thick paint and paint that back into the 
hole that is essentially now in the model. You're gonna then allow that to fully dry and very carefully and gently sand that back down one more time and paint one more layer over the top of that, perhaps two depending on how deep your layers of paint actually are and you need to allow that to dry, sand it back, give it a coat over the top and then essentially just do the exact same process as you did for the last few layers of skin over the top of that area or whatever the area is. As you can see, I managed to fix it and painted the lasso of destiny with the brass color and I gave its handles a silver, dark silver color in order to make it not look boring. I don't actually know the colors of this thing and this felt like it was the right colors for me. I used some panel line wash across all the silver bits that were going to be left over to add some weathering and even maybe more just to add a little bit of depth because I didn't really want to paint too much on them and I then took some of that brass and went around all the edges on the skirt to give it that golden shiny armory look. In order to take care of the terrible shine that the gloss paint has left on the skin, I'm going to use this Galleria matte varnish and I'm going to just brush this over the skin with a flat large brush. I'm also going to stick these little side flaps for a skirt into their places right now. At the same time, there's a couple of things that don't stay in by themselves. For example, the knee pads, I needed to glue them in because they just wouldn't stay in on their own. For her really cool armored suit thing, I was actually a bit scared of this because I would rather spray this no matter what because of the colors that it is but I think this worked out all right I used the silver undercoat and I used a rather translucent red over the top in order to make it sort of look metallic in hindsight I think I would actually mask this off in future and probably spray it because something like this needs to actually look more metallic than what I got it to look like but if you don't have an airbrush then I guess this is a way for you to paint the metallic chest of Wonder Woman. I glued in her arm and I glued in the lasso of destiny and I then proceeded to continue on painting the portrait of this model. The rest of it is pretty simple and straightforward really, at least that's how I feel anyway. After that mistake that I had made earlier, I pretty much am feeling a lot more comfortable because one of the worst things that can happen in model making has already happened and I got over it, overcame it and no one would ever know unless they watch this video, in which case everybody will know and let's just hope that we don't get that many views but actually we want to get a load of views it's a very confusing situation just if you want to help me get a load of views and tell everyone that I make mistakes as well then share this video with your gran and uh, maybe you want to give it a like and a subscribe uh, back to painting this model I used brass on her boots to do the lovely heel parts and also I took some Carabor Crimson and sprayed that into the shadows onto the red of her boots because I felt like the flat red just looked way too boring. You can see the gradient that I have going from a darkish red to a lightish red on the boot and just that alone is enough to make it sort of look like you actually put some effort in. One could almost even say that this was yet another one of the mistakes that I have made whilst making this model by not masking this stuff off and just spraying it with my airbrush where I know I can get a really good color and uh, gradient and shade and everything. But these are the things we do when we're making a model and mistakes happen. When you make the mistake, I think what makes you a better artist is not that you don't make mistakes, but the fact that you can recover from the mistakes that you make. This means that as you are a beginner and you're learning and you're making mistakes you are becoming a better artist because you are learning to fix the mistakes that you are making right now and this will be very helpful for you in the future and one day when you're whipping out statues like a Oompa Loompa in a chocolate factory you will be thanking yourself for making all those mistakes and becoming a better artist and painter from it. 
You may have noticed that I haven't really spoke much about how I'm painting these eyes and that is because almost every video has some kind of section about it. There is even dedicated videos just to painting faces on their own on my channel and if you're interested in that you should go and look at those other videos uh, right now and while you're there you should probably click the subscribe button and share this video with your gran even if I've already told you to do that once in the video it probably means that you really should share this video with your gran. After I've stuck the forehead fringe hair on, I then start to set about work on the shield. And for some reason, I don't even remember this lady having a shield, but apparently she has a shield and it has a lot of patterns on it. You need to use a very specific technique to paint these patterns and this will make your life so easy. It's called the side of the brush painting uh, or edge highlighting if you will. And if you go look on my channel, there's a video for that too. I'm not a shill for my own channel, I promise. But if you would go and look back at those older videos where I sounded like a robot speaking in the video, you will get a lot of information out of videos that not many people saw. I dry brushed the hair um, because I needed it to get a little bit of shadows and highlights. I'm also going to come back and I'll probably spray that with a wash later on. I then start to place the irises and on this model, they are to the side. In one little tip, trick if you will, if you're painting eyes and you're a little bit worried, paint them slightly looking to one side, 9 times out of 10 they won't look as crazy as if you try to paint them looking straight. And with the eyeballs painted, I obviously I'm going to give them a gloss coat once they are done, and the lips get glossed too, and that's also pretty much where I start to say to myself, self, this model is done. <laughs> 